Hey, it's Ekimel. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome to the channel. And I wanted to do a brief update with regards to Samuel Olson and Teresa's roommate now being charged. And so in this video, what I'm going to do is do a brief timeline of events. And then I'm going to show you the video clip from ABC 13. And we're going to look at the document that the family advocate for Sarah, the mother, posted, which was from May 28th, the day after Samuel was reported missing where Dalton was trying to get full custody. And at the very, very, very end, I'll briefly mention Comcast and that whole situation because even to upload this video is probably gonna be a problem. Now, for the brief timeline, it's not gonna have all the in-betweens. We've covered a lot of that during the live stream, so definitely check out my playlist where you can find my live streams where we sat down, went through the documents, we watched the press conferences, the briefing, briefings, and the last thing was uh, Samuel Olson's mother and her attorney and where she straight out said, you know, looking at Dalton, like, how could he not know? Tara, do you believe Dalton is involved? I do. I, I don't see how he couldn't. With all the evidence that has now been brought to life, how are you not involved? Now, the timeline that I'm going to walk you through now is the original timeline that we got. And some of these details are from Benjamin Rivera, the roommate that was with Teresa. And with the new update, which I'm going to put after that, they're saying that they're not sure that the timeline actually matches up. There's some changes and details, which is interesting. So this is going to be the original timeline right now. And then we're going to play the clip with some of the inconsistencies and things that could potentially be different. So the brief timeline, 430 was the last time police say it was verifiable that Samuel was last seen outside of the family. 5-2 was the last time Tanya, which is Samuel's grandmother on the father's side, she says that's the last time she physically saw Samuel. 5-10 was the day that Teresa calls the roommate Rivera and lets him know that Samuel is dead. 513 was the Walmart purchase, and I believe maybe that's the day they went to the storage unit to take uh, Samuel. 521, Dalton claims, according to Ivory Hacker, that he spoke to Samuel, which contradicts the timeline and doesn't make sense because Samuel was already dead. And he told this reporter that he spoke to Samuel on the phone. According to Ivory Hacker, on 522, Dalton claims that he spoke to Teresa and heard Samuel in the background, which again contradicts the timeline. Samuel was dead. 527 Samuel is reported missing. And this is the day where Teresa tells a story where Sarah, Samuel's mother, came with a police officer to Teresa's mother's house, which we'll get a little bit more into that after with the document, and said that a police officer and Sarah shows up and says that they have to take Samuel, and she claims that she gave Samuel over to the police officer, which is false. 528, Dalton, in the document, which we're about to get into, he's uh, claiming and wanting custody, full custody of Samuel. 531, Teresa goes missing. Tanya, the grandmother, states that the last time she had contact with Teresa was around 4 p.m. 531, the same day while Teresa's missing, she contacts Dylan, and they go to the storage unit to get Samuel's body. 6 1 3 30 a.m teresa's friend dylan checks into the motel and on 6 1 6 a.m dylan is seen unloading the tote from the vehicle and leaves now on 6 1 around 3 something in the afternoon tanya the grandmother for samuel on the father's side she does a speech and talks about samuel and and the last time that she spoke to teresa and on 6-1 that evening around 6 p.m., that's when Samuel was found. So this is the ABC 13 video clip, which I think is really interesting, the details that they're going to talk about. Make sure you stay tuned, though, through this because we're going to talk about the May 28th documents, which apparently Dalton lied because he said he's not even or he was never married to Sarah. We could see the uh, marriage certificate and the divorce, all the stuff that's being posted by Jill on Facebook, the family advocate for Sarah. Eric and Gina, what we've learned from these court documents today really brings a lot of what we know in this case into question. The timeline of five-year-old Samuel Olson dying on May 10th and being moved to a storage unit on May 13th came from a police interview with Ben Rivera. 
The 27 year old is now charged with tampering with evidence in this case. His roommate, Teresa Balboa, Samuel's father's girlfriend, is also charged with tampering. Originally, Rivera told police that he got a call from Balboa on May 10th saying Samuel was not breathing and telling him to come home from work. According to court documents, Rivera told police he did and saw bruising on the child's body. He told police they kept him in the bathtub for two days. Rivera says he bought duct tape and a plastic bin from Walmart and they put him in a storage unit on May 13th. 13th. All of that is in question after police investigated further. Court documents say they found texts in Rivera's phone from Balboa. One on May 5th saying she needed to talk to him before he came inside of the apartment. Another on May 12th saying she was moving Samuel's body to the bed because Rivera told her the apartment maintenance was going into the unit that. So it seems like the timeline could have been even earlier. It's hard to say what's true or not now with the, the, the events happening, but uh, Samuel may have been dead even longer than the original May 10th date. A day. Police say they were also able to find surveillance video showing the bin that Samuel Olson was found in showing up to a storage facility in the back of a truck on May 22nd, almost 10 days after Rivera originally told police he was taken mm. there. And I did call Rivera's attorney this afternoon. She said no one would be discussing this case with anyone. She did not indicate if the 27 year old Ben Rivera would be turning himself in on that tampering charge. So I'm going to take you through some of these documents, not the entire thing word for word, but just what's enough. And this is the May 28th document and says here in the matter of the marriage of Dalton petitioner and Sarah Olson respondent and in the interest of Samuel Olson the child it says my name is Dalton Olson I'm above the age of 18 I'm fully competent to make this declaration um it says here the counter respondent Sarah we have never been married we have a child together Samuel Olson who was born May 29 2015 which is interesting because you know they posted the marriage certificate um for Dalton and Sarah for eight 2015 um harris county so that's just i don't know why uh he would say that it's pretty bizarre and just briefly here too sarah olson versus dalton olson okay 128 2020 this was filed divorce with children um so i mean unless there's something i'm not understanding because i see the marriage certificate here uh looks like they were married um, but continuing on, in January 2020, I received a call that Sarah was high using methamphetamine and driving around with both children in her vehicle. I was able to retrieve his child and the paternal grandmother retrieved the other child. I immediately filed for a modification, temporary order, and hired my previous counsel, Erica. Miss Childs told me I had possession and access of my son, that I should let Sarah Olson have electronic communication, and that she was otherwise not to have access. After four months of having Sam, I invited Sarah to his birthday party. I was having on May 31st, 2020, which they've spoken about this. It was at the birthday party that Sarah grabbed Sam, slipped out a side door and placed him in her vehicle. And while driving away, ran me over with her vehicle. When Sarah was arrested, she was laughing the entire time. And the documents that we saw, too, supposedly was dismissed um recently from that point on we moved forward with the understanding that sarah's bond conditions prohibited her from having contact with sam i did not take my son nor did i hire someone to impersonate a police officer in addition sarah denies she has sam and is involved in this matter despite her being seen taking the child from my house hpd sean king is currently investigating the matter and is treating sarah as a suspect wow that's some pretty big claims okay sarah has a history of abuse with sam present and has a history of physical abuse, which she is currently under indictment it is not in sam's best interest to remain with sarah or her immediate family members who are enabling this behavior i attach exhibit c1 is a handwritten statement i do not feel safe for my son if he is in possession of counter respondent and i fear that she's going to harm him or put his life in danger. You know, that's so dirty, especially what this, finding out what Teresa did and whoever else, who knows what exactly she did, but she has obvious involvement and in who else. It seems like there's other people. That is dirty as hell to be throwing that out there. 
I have personal knowledge of the facts and allegations contained above, and they are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Uh, then he signs off the document and 528, 2021 on May 27th, 2021, my fiance, Teresa Balboa was going to take Samuel Olson to school. She had to drop her mom, June cook to her house at around 7:30. Teresa Balboa and Samuel were coming onto the backyard and there was Sarah Olson with an officer in the driveway. The officer demanded Teresa to turn over Samuel to him or she would go to jail. Teresa complied with the officer. Teresa then contacted me and I contacted my mom, Tanya, to tell her what happened. Through all the confusion, we have found out that Sarah said to police that she didn't have Samuel. Teresa and I went to the address, the mom's address, called HPD to find out what officer made the call to turn Samuel over to Sarah. I was told by HPD Harris County that no officer made that call and sent a unit to me for reports. Teresa and I sat with officers for hours. Detective Sean King with HPD is head of the missing person of Samuel Olson. And that's Dalton writing off. And with that, I'm going to call it. There is some other documents that Jill posted, but I'm just kind of spent. It's 12 a.m. right now. I'm going to save this video and post it in the morning. The whole thing with Comcast. Comcast is coming in the morning. Comcast business. I've been having all these issues. You guys know, I don't want to reiterate and go through the entire thing, but they're going to be here early in the morning. I have to get the business class. It's a uh, promotion, 30 day free trial. I can cancel, get uh, everything back if I wanted to. Uh, and so that's what's going on tomorrow. Hopefully when they come and set it up, I don't know how long it's going to take. I can do a little test stream, a private test stream, and then maybe I'll come on tomorrow and see how that works. Um, a live stream with the new business connection but anyway man you guys take care of yourselves appreciate it i feel like with this whole thing too i feel like maybe there's people covering up for each other why is the timeline changing and this is according to evidence now why did they lie about certain things in the timeline are they trying to cover other people in this whole situation it's kind of interesting because we know that um teresa's mother would sleep over benjamin and teresa's place too sometimes so, but yeah, with that, I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Please hit the like and subscribe, please. Peace.